How's it going, everybody? Hope you're all doing well. So, moving into a new series calling the Rig Rundown Series. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be interviewing other people regardless of what they do, but as long as it revolves around, you know, military, law enforcement, you know, body armor, rundowns, the Rig Rundown Series, in, in essence. And I got a friend and a coworker here, and he said he would definitely like to come mm -hmm. on yep. and show his daily setup. And he's running this rig, I mean, what, 15 hours a day, oh, probably? Yeah. Yep. I mean, with plates, mm -hmm. running magazines, running mm -hmm. weapon systems, doing a law enforcement and a security-based mission. So mm -hmm. you could do either or on, other, and it, oh, on yeah. any other day, right? Yep. So pretty much I just want to have him elaborate on all of his gear, what he's been using, kind of why he uses it and how it works for him. Because of course, everybody's gear is different and is tailored to them. So I'll let you have the floor and hey, give us a rundown of what you use every single day. Alrighty, so the main body armor is the HRT rack plate carrier. Him and I have the same one. Um, I, I think it's a great carrier personally. Um, for, so let's start off from the front here. I just got a Ferro Concepts uh, Adapt front panel. This is a dope D-O-P-E front panel, I believe. And I have the three uh, triple mag inserts for uh, AR-15 slash M4. I have a small, I have a good, pretty good size admin pouch just for like, like kind of like maps or anything else that we need to use for that kind of day or something, something like that. And then on the left side of my cummerbund, I have a double stack M4 mag pouch. I like to put usually one or two in there depending on what... Uh, they predicts stuff like that and then i got so you're righty right yes so you're, yep. you're dominantly right yep and then having those extra magazines on the left and the front mm -hmm. makes sense yep and then i got my handcuffs on the behind on the other side of the uh, m4 pouch as well and then on the inside of the cummerbund i have a and a fixed blade knife i like to run just for like close quarters kind of stuff just in case that happens uh it's the torn knives and Haley strategic uh darter it's Pretty nice knife. It's a pretty wicked knife. It's got a uh, nice saw back kind of thing right here for use for sawing things, or you can use it for like retention of somebody if like, if need be. And then you can kind of move them out of the way and stuff like that. I carry that on the inside, so it's kind of so it's kind of concealed in a way, so they people can't see it. And then on the right side of the cummerbund, I have my radio pouch, and then I have my baton pouch behind my radio pouch as well. That's kind of on a hard to reach spot, but I mean it's. I can, use free. I can grab it either with my right or with left hand, but it's kind of hard to grab my right hand, so I might have to switch that around, but... Always evolving, right? <laughs> yep, yep. And then the back side, let's see. I just have a couple back panels from HRT that I like, actually. This is the, the top one is their large general purpose pouch. You can put in, like, like an MRE, stuff like that in there, so in case you're doing, like, like dismounted ops kind of stuff like that, or you can do like other magazines for like teammates or uh, other flat, like maybe flashbangs as well, but I would probably put them in one of these pouches. But um, yeah, you can probably put magazines, flashbangs, anything else that you need with like general purpose kind of stuff as well. And then for these, these are like their dual removable general purpose pouches. I usually have on the, so this would be the left side. I usually just put like, like power bars and stuff like that in there, like some like multivitamins, stuff like that, just in case I like just for like actually pick me up or something like that. And then this side, I, I'll probably have, I usually put medical stuff in here, but you can take it out. You can put it in flashbangs, anything kind of like that. Any kind of grenades that we use like that. And then on the bottom, I know you guys seen in the last IFAC video that we him and I did, this is the Ferro Concepts and Ford Observations Group uh, Roll 1 Trauma kit, trauma Pouch. Very good pouch. I run that. It kind of helps, like I said in the last video, kind of helps with like, one more support for vehicle ops and stuff like that. But if you'd like to learn more about that, you can look to the video that we did about our different IFACs and, and stuff like that. So, and then moving on to the, my battle belt, I usually run, I run one single pistol mag pouch on the front left side. And then I have, I run, I could put like a pistol, pistol mag in there or a flashlight, something like that as well. And then I run two double stack, pistol and AR-15 slash M4 mag pouches. I usually leave this one open for like another pistol magazine or something like that. And then 
This one I have my my, my uh, multi tool in there, and I run two uh, AR15 or M4 mags in the mag pouches right there. Because I'll most of the time I'll be lo reloading from there because that's where I'm fastest from is from the from the battle belt. Then I run just a Condor dump pouch. It's pretty nice. You can it folds open real nice, and then you can use the drawstrings to tighten it up as well. So in case you don't lose stuff, you can put in like spear mags, flashbangs, NVGs, water bottles, food, anything you, anything you want in there, pretty much. But that's why I like that's why I like having a dump pouch because you can use it for a multitude of different things, not just for spare magazines. But so yeah, then so then of course the Odin Medical and Coyote Tactical Solutions uh, burrito, IFAG is what they called it. Um, of course, another one we did a video on that as well. But it's got a I have a tourniquet on the bottom, Soft T Gen Four, or no, this is a Gen Three, I believe, and I have couple medical patches on there. Then I just have a North American Rescue Trauma Shears and the Focus Medical Group uh, Trauma Kit as well. So They also make the body armor inserts as well. Yep, and that's I have one behind my front plate as well. So Tracking. And then, and then, of course, the Safari Land holster on my right side. Of course, I'm right-hand dominant. And then, so that's for the pistols that we run as well for the M18s, but... Yeah, so pretty, pretty self-explanatory for the holster. So, so I see here on this side at least, you're running two mags on your left-hand side. Mm -hmm. Now, was this deliberate or was it by mistake that you have the magazines with the rounds pointing back? Are you a beer can kind of grip so for, guy? So for that, I like having the beer can grip. But if it's on the front side, like on these three, I like you doing like the uh, was it the end that the thing the the index method, but I like that because like if you have to reload from an empty magazine, you can just slam it in there and get the bolt we're going and you can go go to work again. Got it. The only reason I ask is because some of these people out here are pretty savage about being like, oh, his oh, mags yeah. are the wrong way <laughs> and they'll just get on you in the comments. Mm -hmm. But like I said, I was kind of asking, was that deliberate and set up for your type of style that yes. you train with? Yep. Cool. Because then I like that because I feel like it's going to be harder for me to actually do like the index method from the battle belt position because it's going to be kind of hard to because you could be in different position like you normally would be so and that's just how i've trained with the rounds facing to the rear that's just faster for me that's what i like doing personally do you like running the inner belt and the outer belt kind of setup because that's what this type of setup is it has that inner mm -hmm. velcro yep. to it i, I, mean, I, I like leave it, yes. the inner belt on at all times mm -hmm. yep so i mean i run a similar setup i mean i run the blue alpha gear or the blue force gear and, and then this, it works really well for oh, me. Yeah. But and then I run the the Ronin Shooto belt. I wasn't at the task force, but I don't really do too much like helicopter operations. So I just like using. I just like having it slick right there, and it kind of saved me some money as well. So, but I, I I am digging the belt a lot though. I've had it for over a year. I would say like about a or no, yeah, about about a year or so. Um, Still I'm looks really like, like it's holding up pretty well. Oh honestly. yeah. Like, oh yeah. Mine's doing pretty good. That inner belt really tears up over a while. It you does. gotta kind of replace them out. Yeah, it but does. I don't know if yours does. I mean, mine mine, mine hasn't so far, but it's kind of getting some wear on it. But I mean, that's just that's just comes with the job, I guess. And of course, tacos. Yep. I mean, HSGI tacos. I like those like tacos. I agree. I'm I'm 100. That's what I run on my belt kit as well. Um, HRT, your plate carrier. Mm -hmm. Surprisingly enough, I run, which some of you will know, I run roughly the same kit kind of set up a little bit differently than him, but he has different needs for himself, his body type, all mm -hmm. kinds of stuff like that. <clears throat> so is it comfortable for you? Because oh, yeah. of course, I guess if it wasn't, you probably wouldn't be wearing it mm -hmm. every single day for oh, 15 yeah. hours. Yep. So do you like w this better than what you were running? Say the issued kit that you ran. Oh, yes. Which I forget what issued kit think, that we had. I think it's but... the Trident Tactical, I think, is the ones that we that we run, yes, I'm pretty sure. That's true. Yeah. But I like I like the HRT because it has, it has like the pontoons on the inside of the plates, so it has, actually has some little more comfort and it kind of keeps the plates obviously not sweating as much. I mean, granted, you're going to sweat in plate carriers, that's just how it is, but it also allows some airflow, airflow down on your chest and stuff like that, so it keeps you kind of cooler as well. But And then, of course, you have like the comms, like cable uh, retention things right here on the uh, on the shoulder pads as well, shoulder straps. But I, I do like this carrier a lot actually, and it's also a very budget friendly carrier as well. Unlike some of them, like say like the Cry JPC, those are like 250 bucks just for the plate carrier. That's not including plates, but 
So how long, how long have you owned this kit? When, I've do you remember this, when you bought it roughly? I think I've had this for about six to seven months. And I, I'm, I'm digging it so far. I like it a lot. I like the modularity of the back panels and the front panels as well. But I know I was running the, I believe it was the response placard from HRT. And that was a nice placard, don't get me wrong. But I think the, I think the AR mag pouches were a little too far on the right side. And I, I don't really run pistol that much. So kind of having the two pistol mags on top and only two AR mags in the front, that kind of, I wasn't a fan of that. But still, it was a great placard though. But that's why I went with the Pharaoh Concepts. But kind of the benefit of this too is mm -hmm. you can throw whatever placards even different company because mm -hmm. you're saying you're running a different placard mm -hmm. than actually hrt because yep. you know that's just what you want mm -hmm. that's kind of the cool thing about this kit granted i'm running it i like it as well um so far i mean how much time do we probably have we probably have a year's worth of time oh, together yeah. into the hrt kit and mm -hmm. it's it's holding up very well for the money i mean normally oh, yeah. kits are way more expensive and we're using it every day, mm -hmm. like, you know, wrestling around oh. on the ground, oh, doing yeah. things, you know, training, mm -hmm. you know, all kinds of stuff. I mean, it's getting, it's not just sitting in a corner collecting dust. It is used, mm -hmm. both of ours, every single day. Oh, yeah. And as far as I'm aware, you haven't had any issues, like oh, no. um, stitching or anything blowing out like that. Oh, it's no. still pretty it's, solid. Oh, yeah, it's still holding up very well, honestly. It's pretty much, like, brand new, but, of course, we've, we've used it for almost, like, a year's worth of time so far, and it's still holding up like new. So that's what I like to see. So if you want to flip the carrier around to the back, yep. I'm going to talk about how you have like an IFAC kind of a burrito. Is that what it's called? Uh, so I'm not familiar with this type of IFAC. <laughs> so they, so the company that they came out with this, they were, was it, they were doing some uh, operations with uh, ODAs in, I think, Syria in 2017. And they kind of, this is like, it's like a concept for this. And then they kind of finally, they finally came out with it this year. I think it was this past summer in June or July or something like that. And then that like that's kind of how it's called the Roll One Trauma Pouch. And they just like I don't know like it was like a prototype for like Green Beret buddies of theirs. And then they loved it so much, and they started making it like commercially. So, so does it get annoying back there, like driving around in a vehicle or anything like that? Do you notice it, or is it like slim enough? or honestly add some kind of protection or like even a little comfortability, mm -hmm. like it kind of opens up that space in the back? So I don't really notice it that much. I mean, of course, when you're running around, it kind of flops around your back. That's kind of just going to be kind of normal. But like, honestly, for vehicle operations, it helps because it kind of like folds down onto your back. So it kind of gives you some lumbar support for extended periods of time. So, and then of course, it's very accessible too. Like you just have to, you loosen up these bungees and you can pull it from either side. So that's why I like a lot about it. Kind of like the, uh, the blue alpha gear uh was it the micro trauma kit now mm -hmm. that that like, yeah yep that's what i've been running on my kit and that's that's a cool setup oh, so yeah. it's kind of the same way just really lengthened out mm -hmm. so can you grab it from either side too so yep. you can grab like whatever you can get to it oh yeah so yeah you can pull it from either right or left side whichever hand you have free but cool. yeah so you, that that's simple as that and you just pull some left some velcro tabs and then it's you almost have, like a tool roll like oh it yeah kind of like opens up and you have everything oh yeah Cool. It's pretty, very easy to, to, to deploy, and then it kind of gets kind of hard to put it back in. That's what you have a battle buddy for. They just put it back there for you. But same with all the general purpose stuff on the mm -hmm. back. I guess it's kind of hard to access, but, but you know we're constantly rolling with a team. Mm -hmm. We're never alone yep. in essence. So yeah. it's kind of a hindrance. But where else are you going to put the gear? And I yeah. kind of get that is yep. hey, on your back, it's it's really good to go. But yeah, and, then, and for these, like these, these come off really easy. They just Pull the Velcro, and then you can just rip them off oh, like, that's what, cool. like that. So you can give out some medical or some like granola bars or like power bars or some like mats or whatever you need. So that's why I like the uh, the, the double general purpose general purpose pouches for me. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I didn't. I actually didn't know that they did that. Yep, that's cool. I like that. Yeah, cool. Well, do you have any other closing thoughts on it or anything like that? Because, I mean, I think it's a good kit. I run it, too. Mm -hmm. um, I will continue to run it mm -hmm. until I find something better. I mean, I imagine oh, yeah. you're in the same boat. Yep. Like, if nothing better really pops up on the market or anything like that, we're going to continue running these. And if they damage or get damaged or they break or they fail, we're definitely going to show that with you. But in the years to come, if nothing goes wrong with them, we're just going to keep going with them. Oh, yeah. And then, but it seems like you have a pretty solid setup that oh you yeah. like. You've placed things in particular locations mm -hmm. that you 
have them set up for yourself. Yep. Of course, I would do a few things differently, mm -hmm. but that's me. You're mm -hmm. completely different and you train the way that works for you, just like everyone else out there. Mm -hmm. That's why I don't like seeing on YouTube is like, oh, this is the way you have to do it. It's not. Just get out there, train with your gear, mm -hmm. and see if it works. Even if it's a crazy idea. Personally, I wouldn't run my mags like that. But for him, he's pretty quick with that, and it works for him, so run with it. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of why I brought it up in the beginning. But it looks like you have everything pretty much covered down, and it works, and I guess if you didn't like it, you would change it. Yeah. So. But I think one thing I would say is I like to keep this side relatively clear from running a pistol, but... Sometimes I don't run a pistol, so I put things on back on this side, kind of even out the way, distribute it evenly. But and that's your right or your dominant yep. side where your pistol yeah. goes as well. Yep. But. Cool. I like the setup. I mean, it, it works for you. I like it. So, mm -hmm. I mean, running pretty good. Oh, yeah. I like doing this stuff. I don't know if you guys like running this, you know, new rig rundown series. I'm going to try to bring a bunch of people in and, you know, just interview and talk about why they, you know, run it. Granted, I, I know like some people get all caught up like, oh, if you're special forces, that's the only information that I care about. But there's a lot of people that aren't doing, you know, direct action missions, but literally wear their body armor 10 times as much as those guys because they're doing a daily mission. Yeah, they might not get in gunfights every single day, but everything has to work, especially when you wear it years upon years. Mm -hmm. Those guys have a good setup. Oh, you yeah. Know what? To do yep. you know so if you guys like this kind of stuff and want to see continued stuff or more details on this kit or even more videos of us doing stuff together and other people or whatever definitely hit like and subscribe <coughs> definitely comment below you know whatever the comments you want why maybe some questions because yeah. he'll probably get in there um, YouTube channel coming up SF tactics mm -hmm. he's definitely gonna push into there and start mm -hmm. doing a lot of his own content which is awesome so other than that, I hope y'all have a great day.